So, what? You throw it at the hyena's head. And when the hyena gets mad, turns around, your buddy throws another rock at him. Hey, guess what? You can pick up another rock. They're all over the place. Maybe you have a satchel filled with rocks. You can grab those rocks. You can throw them at the hyenas. The hyenas run off or they get hit in the head with one of rocks. Now, these Australopithecines, they weren't gonna go over there and attack the hyenas with their claws because they didn't really have claws. They have fingernails. And they weren't going to jump on them and bite them with their fangs because they didn't have fangs. Our Australopithecine ancestors, they started to do different things with their hands than the ancestors before them. Think about it. All metal is a rock. Every piece of thing that we make out of metal is rock. Every bullet is a rock. All metal is rock. Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. This is Science Stuff with Brandy Beckett. Today, I want to talk about your inner Australopithecine like my inner Australopithecine, our inner Australopithecine. Okay, Brandy, well, what do you mean by your inner Australopithecine? Okay, well, first we have to explain what an Australopithecine is and how is that inner me? <laughs> an Australopithecine is an archaic hominid, like, our ancestors going back have always been human, at least for the past two million years. If you trace your grandmother's grandmother, grandmother's grandmother's grandmother, going back as many generations as it takes to get back about two million years, all of those individuals would be human, right? And they would have the same, physical structure basically as you and I do today. They would have the same hand shapes. They would have the same bone configurations. They would have the same chin. You know, they would have a chin. <laughs> not going back two million years, you're not gonna have a chin. You're only going to have, those ancestors are only going to have chins going back about 300,000 years. If you go grandmother, grandmother, grandmother going back about 300,000 years, no one at that time is going to have chins or that's when chins first start. We first start to see evidence of skulls with chins, humans with chins. In fact, Homo sapiens sapien, us, anatomically modern humans were the only ones that had the chin, right? Our closest cousins didn't have chins, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and the like. None of those humans had chins, but we all shared other common traits with all of the other humans going back 2 million years. And if you go back 2 million years, even our chinless ancestors, they all had pretty good thumbs, right? And so that's what I mean by our inner Australopithecine. We get really good thumbs from our inner Australopithecines because beyond 2 million years, in that time, we're not finding any fossils or any evidence of, of humans. We see Australopithecines from 2 million years to about four or five million years, maybe even going back as far as six or seven million years, we have Australopithecines, but probably between two and four million years is, is that's where our Australopithecine ancestors lie and all of the other Australopithecines around them, right? So there is these groups, lots and lots of groups of these like human apes that were running around beyond two million years ago. And these Australopithecines, they had really good thumbs, right? And their ancestors, the convergence of where chimpanzee bonobo ancestors and our ancestors, you know, are the same. So at that point, 
We don't have these dominant thumbs. Those ancestors would have thumbs closer to the, our other ape relatives. The, you know, the ancient, ancient apes all had kind of weak thumbs because the purpose for the thumbs back then were different than the purpose us humans use our thumbs for and different when the Australopithecines start to use their thumbs. So back beyond 5 million years ago, our ancestry lines would have been up in trees, most likely using trees as nesting at night, using trees to gather resources, going up and getting all of the fruits from the trees. They would have depended on tree life and their hands were evolved to deal with tree life. <laughs> they had thumbs that were designed to, or evolved to be good at climbing, right? You didn't need to really use all your strength with thumbs if you're climbing, you're using your strength with these fingers. So look at a chimpanzee, gorillas, their, their fingers are long and strong, their thumbs are not. So why do humans have big, strong thumbs and chimpanzees and bonobos and gorillas compared to their size and their strength have little weak thumbs? Because they don't use them like we do. And our Australopithecine ancestors, they started to do different things with their hands than the ancestors before them. And the things they started to do was manipulate tools around them. And they started to use their hands to grip tool-like things, to grip rocks that could be used as tools. They started to use their thumbs in different ways than transport through the trees. And this became a pressure because later, millions of years later, beyond the first ancestors who started to pick up rocks and found the ability that they can throw these rocks. And if you have a good strong thumb, you're gonna need that if you're gonna throw things, right? At least stronger than for climbing. So, our Australopithecines, they didn't come down from the trees and then instantly become the great hunters that humans became and become the apex predator on the Serengeti. That was not the case. When our ancient ancestors came down from the trees and started getting resources from away from the trees, not going vertical for resources, but going lateral for resources, they found that scavenging along with gathering would have been very helpful for them. And a pressure for scavenging would have been to develop stronger thumbs. Let's think about it. Those ancestors at that time, they knew how to use tools, right? Because we see that across all of the apes. All of the apes and most of the primates know how to use basic tools like sticks into holes to get termites, sticks into holes to stab, uh, you know, a, a bush baby monkey. That's what the chimpanzees do. It's kind of brutal, but they do do that. And, you know, orangutans use tools. Gorillas use tools, chimpanzees, bonobos, they all use tools, but they don't manufacture tools. Humans manufacture tools. But our Australopithecines, at the beginning, didn't necessarily manufacture tools, but they were mastering how to use tools even more than their cousins were, than the ancient ancestors of bonobos and chimpanzees. They were probably still using basic tools, but these Australopithecines going away from the trees would have discovered that their shoulders were brachial, which means that they can do this with their shoulders. And because their ancestors spent so much time in the trees, they had shoulders that can allow them to hang from tree branches. 
Like, that's the difference between apes and monkeys, or a difference between apes and monkeys. Shoulders. Monkeys' shoulders are like kind of underneath them, and their arms are like this because monkeys stay on top of the branches. They go on top of the branches. The apes, the bigger apes, we got brachial shoulders because we got, we evolved bigger bodies than our monkey cousins, you know, 10, 15, 20 million years ago. And those bigger bodies were more efficient going under the branches. So grabbing branches overhead instead of underneath. You can see the shoulders set up different. Monkeys can't do this with their arms like we can because their ancestors never went under the branches. Our ancestors hung under the branches. Think about how our orangutan cousins do it today, how they travel through the trees. They're very brachial. Their shoulders do all this, right? Our shoulders, we still maintain that. We don't have the strength to keep up in the trees with our cousins, but... But our shoulders, they're brachial, right? And so were the Australopithecines. Their shoulders were brachial. And so when they got on the ground, they could realize that they could pick up a rock. And if you can hold on to that big rock with your five digits here, with your brachial shoulder, you can throw that rock. And guess what? If you're scavenging for food and you're not the best Hunter, so you're not taking down the prey of food, but say a hyena, a group of hyenas, they take down prey, right? They take down some protein meat that you and your other Australopithecine uh, friends, because you would have lived as an Australopithecine, you would have lived in groups probably somewhere around 12, 20, maybe as small as five individuals, but you would have lived in small groups. You want to live by yourself so you would have had a group of your buddies right and you're like out wandering you're going hey we need to gather up some some roots we need to gather up some berries we need to gather up some whatever this green leafy stuff is and oh look at those hyenas over the hill <gasps> they took down a deer oh my goodness we should have that deer not those hyenas let's go over there and scare off those hyenas now these Australopithecines, they weren't going to go over there and attack the hyenas with their claws because they didn't really have claws. They have fingernails. And they weren't going to jump on them and bite them with their fangs because they didn't have fangs. They, they, their teeth were getting smaller and smaller, right? Their teeth were much larger than ours are today, but they were smaller than their cousins, the chimpanzees and the bonobos' ancestors. So they didn't have the teeth or the claws to fight off the hyenas. And they could just chase them off, not just running and going, because what the, hy the hyena's going to go, what are you doing? We're bigger, stronger, and faster than you. What are you doing? But there was an advantage with those Australopithecines with developing stronger and stronger thumbs to hold on to hefty rocks and with these brachial shoulders and you have about five or six of your friends around you you can take a whole pack of hyenas who just took down a kill so what you throw it at the hyena's head and when the hyena gets mad turns around your buddy throws another rock at him hey guess what you can pick up another rock they're all over the place maybe you have a satchel filled with rocks you can grab those rocks you can throw them at the hyenas the hyenas run off or they get hit in the head with a bunch of rocks because <laughs> they would have been able to throw rocks better than anything else out there on this on the serengeti at the time they would have been the rock-throwing champions, the Australopithecines. So, you can throw rocks very well, better than chimpanzees, better than bonobos, better than any of the other apes. They can throw things. Go to the zoo, watch them. They'll throw their poo at you. <laughs> They'll throw lots of things, but they're not very good at throwing things because it was never a pressure for them, for them, or for their ancestors. But for us, throwing rocks has been a pressure for millions of years. 
we got so good at it that and our thumbs got so big and strong that we just developed other tools where we didn't have to throw rocks we made sticks and tied rocks to, to other sticks and we threw the stick that threw the stick that threw the rock <laughs> and then we eventually made that we the stick and other sticks that we tied to the rock with little bird feathers at the end and we flung those rocks really fast and then eventually because we can manipulate lots of things with our developed thumbs that we got from our inner australopithecine we were able to develop weapons and tools that can throw rocks very very fast and very very hard we're the best at rock throwing so much so that we can throw rocks into outer space but think about it all metal is a rock every piece of thing that we make out of metal is rock every bullet is a rock all metal is rock we got really good at manipulating shaping and throwing rocks we did it we did it because of our inner australopithecine you can throw a rock and some people can even throw baseballs <laughs> so we became the best at that because of the pressure of throwing rocks we developed good thumbs to hold on to things which later became very handy in manufacturing tools thumbs kind of made us oscillopithecines which eventually turned us into humans so think about your thumb think about your shoulder think about your ability to throw things and thank your inner oscillopithecine thank your ancient oscillopithecine ancestors for throwing rocks <laughs> Okay, I'm going to leave you with an interesting science fact. Neanderthals had the largest brain of any animal ever on our planet. Think about it. Bye-bye for now.